Hey folks, um, I want to share with you today a video on, uh, t well, mainly fake snow. Um, I've looked all over, you know, YouTube videos and TikTok and, you know, YouTube reels or, or uh, YouTube shorts and Instagram reels. And the main things that I found in creating fake snow were things that were either cutting diapers open and extracting powder and sifting it and adding water to it and then creating the, uh, you know, fake snow from the expanded uh, material, that, that powder um, in there, uh, or mixing cornstarch and various other things that involved liquids. I didn't want liquids because I want to use this on my dioramas and I want to put it on like action figures. And I didn't want there to be any residual staining or, um, you know, any type of cleanup or dampness uh, that would potentially, you know, leave some, uh, you know, remaining marks on my figures or props. Um, so what I did find was that turned my attention to the use of different types of XPS foam, uh, like the kind that your stereos or your, do people buy stereos anymore? No, wait, the kind your TVs, I'm old. <laughs> Not stereos. I don't think people buy those anymore. The kind that your TVs uh, that comes with your television sets uh, um, or like home appliances, the white little balls that are shaped into um, packaging material. <clears throat> I tried that and uh, I found another type of foam also that's just called a crafting foam. I'm going to share both of these types of foam with you. An XPS foam is just expanded polystyrene. The denser it is, the less air has been blown out, blown into it to expand it. Um, so that's why the kind that you see uh, with the um, shipping packaging material, all the little balls in there, it's been expanded quite a bit. Whereas XPS foam, like we used to build dioramas, isn't expanded very much at all. It's really dense. So I said all that to say that I experimented with a couple different types of foam and I want to share the results with you. One of them is pretty humorous. <laughs> and I am going through the struggle so that you don't have to. <laughs> so um, I want to share with you uh, first the foam not to use and then I'll share with you the foam to use and then we'll proceed from that into how I took a picture that we're going to take a look at right now. One of these ways. Okay, let's take a look at it. Here I am. <laughs> Let's take a look at this photo and you can see the fake snow that I used on Jason's clothing. The snow falling is done in post, but we want to take a look at the snow that's on the bell, on the trash can in the back, the machete, uh, uh, and the snow that's on the ground. Um, this is a, my take on a Christmas photo. Not everyone shares the Christmas cheer the same way. <laughs> Thankfully so. But look at the snow on the ground. It photographs white. It photographs sparkly. It photographs nice. This is the foam you don't use. And to start off with that, I recorded it and played it in reverse because I just thought it looked really cool. Look at the healing knife. Instead of cutting, it brings the foam back together. <laughs> anyway, nonsense. This is the foam you do not use. So I'm going to show you why. After I cut it down and put it into my Nutribullet uh, blender here, we're going to show you why you don't use this foam. Not only does it not grind down into a scalable uh, size, it doesn't grind up into a powder. It stays in little tiny balls you can see here. But here's the main reason you don't use it. Watch this. Look at all that static. Good grief. Watch this. I have magical powers. Come to me. Not really. It's just a staticky mess of nonsense. <laughs> Think that's bad. Watch this. Look at that. That's crazy. Even if there were some way to like de-electrify uh, it, <laughs> if that's that's a term, uh, it just doesn't grind down into a small enough piece that I think looks realistic. This does. This is not 
expanded polystyrene foam. This is made from recycled plastic. It will grind down to a powder. Look at that. Whoa, takes me back. <laughs> anyway, when you're done grinding it, tap it down out of the Nutribullet blades because some will stay in there. And this is recycled plastic and it creates a little bit of a dust. Um, you might want to wear a mask, rinse your Nutribullet or Ninja out or blender out really well. It's recycled plastic. You don't want to get that back into any of your food product. Um, I'm stubborn and old and I just don't care. So I got a nice looking snow out of it. So here we are in the studio and look at that. You can paint this around with a brush, move it around, put it where you want it. Uh, and it's going to stay on the uh, dial. I'm working on top of a mat because when I'm done, I want to be able just to brush all that off and then pour it into a bag. So, you know, here talking about the light setup, this is really reflective uh, product, just like real snow is really reflective. So you don't really want to use, or I don't really want to use a direct flash on this. I'm using a lot of bounce cards on this so that I could reverse bounce the light back onto the scene. Reflected light is always softer. And so we're gonna make uh, use of that quality in this shot because I wanna retain detail in the snow through the photograph. Uh, so we're just, I'm just setting up here and I've got that grid over top through the uh, circular uh, reflector shade uh, hood on there. Um, and there's a grid in there and I bring it out and I have a couple different ideas of lighting diagrams that I want to go with. But the main thing here is I, I really want to draw attention with the light to where I want your eye to go. And I want it to focus on Jason, but also I want that trash can in the back with the bloody Santa hand to draw your attention just a little bit more than Jason. So this lighting setup wasn't going to work for me and it's okay to change midway through, try different techniques and approaches. So what I end up doing here is just lighting Jason with a bounce card. You can see here with the loom cube, flashing light back onto the scene from the, the bounce card. Same thing in the light behind the window there. It's a loom cube with the reverse uh, flash. Then there's also a loom cube behind the door, but we'll get to that later. I'm going to change that lens hood from a circular lens hood to a snoot. This is going to light the trash can in the back. See that? See that? <laughs> so um, it's going to really focus the light in the back where I want it, not create a bunch of light spill to light up areas of the scene that I don't want because the snow is really reflective. Position this snoot over the top of the trash can the way I want it and check it with the modeling light just to make double sure it's hitting where I need. Probably listening to some music in my head right there so I don't get a YouTube strike. <laughs> but this is, is such a fun set and it's a dio that I have built a few months ago and this snow transforms it in a way that allows me to use it, you know, in a, in a different way. And so that helps keep the artistic motivation going while using some of the same props you might have. I'm just going to put my trigger on the camera here, a couple of AA double, double batteries. We're going to take a few practice shots here. And notice the diffuser on top of the dial. That is to give a soft light so we don't get that harsh reflection off the snow and get clipping. Um, you know, that snoot is just focused on the trash can, but there is a little light around it you'll see in the final images. I'm gonna show you the before and the after of the final image so you can, you know, kind of see the adjustments I made in post were just adding some falling snow and uh, some color temp and some local, some real local, uh, adjustments, uh, sharpening, contrast, things like that. 
since I shoot raw, none, none of that stuff is added in for me. I got to go in and do it on purpose. I want control. But anyway, um, you know, and I took a few different shots. Look at the back of the camera. There's a bit of a different one. It's not the one I'm going to show you, but it's a much different composition. We got the light on in the back. Definitely got light coming out of the door, hitting the trash can. Um, but here's the shot I ended up sharing and going with. Shot on the right is, you know, completed and all the post-production done. Shot on the left is straight out of camera. You can just see I did some color temp adjustments, some contrast, added the snow falling on the ground. But take a look at that snow. It, it falls nice, or it doesn't fall nice. It looks like it fell nicely. <laughs> um, and it's on the ground. It's, it's workable. It's not wet. There's nothing it's going to do to damage your dio. And, and it works really nice and clean. Make sure you get that type of foam, the crafting foam, from uh, Walmart. And you could probably get it other places too, but that's where I found it for about a buck 10 a square. And I made a big old Ziploc bag of it. So hope that helps folks. If you haven't done so, like and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate everybody chiming in and sharing their support being enthused over toy photography diorama building and 3d printing appreciate everybody's input like and subscribe follow me on tiktok facebook instagram youtube and yeah those places etsy and my website insightfulimagery.com <laughs> take care